Uh, oh, I lost you. Are you there? Yeah, hang on a second. Okay. There we go. We had to get the uh, recording started. I need to get my uh, my heads. I need to get some cool headset like yours. I need to get yeah. ear things. Yeah, these are like 20 bucks. They're All really right. nice. Send me a link when we get done here so I know where to get them. Okay. All right, let's uh, get started here with another episode of the American Truck Driver Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Polk, alongside Larry Long. We're going to do some follow-up. We're going to do as we're going to add to a little bit of what we talked about last time on episode 55, truck and go, uh, truck and grow rich. Uh, I kind of like the title that Larry came up with there because it's, it, it's clever uh, it's a play on words, but really it, it, it shows how we're talking here, not just about trucking, but about building wealth in general, making yourself valuable in the marketplace and how to do that. Uh, after listening back, one thing that I personally wanted to wanted to cover, uh, this probably falls as an objection that we may uh, we may hear. Uh, but Larry and I both believe that the trucking industry offers a unique opportunity to be able to build wealth uh, with hard work, with discipline with uh, the right training and mentoring, it's, it's possible to make yourself a millionaire in this business. Now, here's what I wanted to say to that. Can you do everything that we tell you and still fail? Yes. Um, the reality is, and uh, I want to try to come up with, an, with maybe an example here. Because I failed... Uh, and know, and I know what that feels like. I often th- look back at how my operation probably would have been different had I known Larry back then, had I had some of these principles, had I had that influence in my life. And I think that what this this process, what this worldview, the way we're looking at things can, can help you is let's say, for example, you do everything right. You save up your money, you pay cash for a truck, you have a nice sizable, um, maintenance fund and you get started in 90 days. And let's just say the absolute worst of the worst happens. You blow an engine, a transmission, and blow both rear ends, like, say, at the same time. I'm just going to exaggerate it way out of proportion, okay? But everything, everything breaks. Well, you're obviously in a position where you have a truck, you're an operator, and you own a truck that doesn't work. Well, here's the light at the end of the tunnel that I just want everybody to keep in the back of their mind. Let's say the absolute worst possible situation happens. You've, you've, you've bought a truck for $10,000. You've run it. You've saved some maintenance, and all of a sudden, it just breaks in half. The frame breaks. Well, your risk is still so much lower than even mine was, and I didn't buy a really expensive truck, that it's not really all that hard to start over. You don't have as far to fall. And that's what I'm starting to realize that even if I buy a $10,000 truck, I drive it for six months and the frame breaks in half. I can probably recover from that and find another truck pretty easily. And I just want everyone to, to think about that, that this is not a foolproof, uh, method or system where there's there's a zero percent chance of failure because that just doesn't exist anywhere in life i mean you could get cancer you know after you buy your ten thousand dollars things can happen but what i have learned is that even in the worst case scenarios if i know what my value is just as a driver then i can go somewhere like here and I can make that seventy-five or eighty or a hundred thousand dollars, and I can live to fight another day. That's that's the thing that I wanted to say as a follow-up, because 
you know, we've talked about, and, and we've mentioned this before, and we'll tell the story about this truck that we have that, you know, we bought and got a really good deal on and ended up spending almost $50,000 on it. And if it was our only truck, it would have bankrupted us. Um, you know, now probably you, one of you that's watching or listening to this wouldn't buy that truck, uh, cause we shouldn't have either. And we'll teach you how to avoid that. Um, but just for the sake of clarity, this is not foolproof. This is not risk free. You have to take risks in order to win. Um, but I one I believe with every fiber of my being that, that if you follow this, this process and these principles, that if you do encounter that, that incredibly rare worst case scenario, it's survivable. Whereas the way, the normal way, I'm going to use air finger quotes, the normal way that everybody does it, when the worst happens, it's unsurvivable. You cannot survive it. So go ahead and respond to that, Larry. Well, I just want to add a couple of things to it. Um, part of that is, I mean, you come here and you're going to drive one of our trucks for the first year or two. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're, you're learning what some of these risks might be because as we do these things and share them with you, you're going to learn from our mistakes. You're going to learn from things we do right and things we do wrong. Um, so it's not like you're starting on your own, like you did, you know, right. you're starting with us, you know, helping you all along the way. Um, a lot of people are going to end up probably buying the trucks that they drove for us. They're all going to, they're, they're already going to have driven that truck for a couple of years. Right. And so they know it pretty well. They've just driven it for a year and a half or two years, you know. Um, so that's another thing that would help make that, you know, would help comfort you that in that. Mm-hmm. And like you say, if, if with all that happening, it's still you, you buy it and the next day the, it blows an engine. I mean, you know, that could happen. Um, um, but here's the thing. Um, all, I mean, all you have to do is jump into the truck. Right. Work, work for a couple of months, make a little money, and we, and, we, and, we, and we get back in the saddle. If you go out and buy an $85,000 used truck, you know, it could blow up tomorrow too, okay? Now you've got a truck payment to mm-hmm. the tune of six or 700 bucks a week, you know, and, 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 and your own um, requirements for money, and now your truck's broke. How, you fi- how do you fix that? You know, I mean, you can, you still can go ahead and go to work for somebody else, but right. that truck payment's still there unless yep. you let them repo. So when you make a mistake in the normal way of doing it, as you would say, it usually is a company with financial ruin or, or certainly harm, you know, that takes a while to dig out from under when you've only got 10 or 15 or $20,000 invested. Yeah. It's bad, but it won't put yeah. you in the grave. Okay. Right. It's just going to be a bump. You know, and, 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 uh, it, it's, and if you're doing it right, um, you know, your, your maintenance account will, co- if you had all three of those components felt at the same time, yeah, we'd probably be rough, you know, yeah. but you know what? Day. maybe we could get a used engine, we can mm-hmm. get used components. You, you, we could put it back on the road, you know, right. And, and minimize it. Um, so it's not, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's not without risk. But it's with minimal risk. And then also when you couple in the fact that you've got now a network that includes you and I, um, you know, there's a lot of value to that as well, you know. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. I, I mean, I'm telling you, man, I look back at my situation and it's a miracle, a miracle that I survived. I mean, I think just in, well, okay, we've got a truck in the shop right now that just really getting a 120 day inspection and we're having to spend some money. You know, we're get, we're working on the drive line and we're fixing some air leaks and putting brakes on and it's nothing what you would call a major repair. It would have broke me. I, there's no way I couldn't have fixed this drive shaft. Uh, you know, I couldn't have, you know, replace an air dryer. 
I would have been so freaked out that I couldn't have, I couldn't have done it and how I made it, uh, you know, I put, uh, I don't know, three or 400,000 miles on that truck and it's just a miracle that I survived it, you know, cause there's so many things that I see now that could have gone wrong that somehow didn't, or I was, you know, um, able to fix on my own in a parking lot somewhere. Thanks to YouTube. I mean, thank God for YouTube. I'd really <laughs> been screwed, you know, but it's, it's so much more comforting now to know that we can prepare for and be ready for a $2,000 drop shaft, you know, what, that we can be prepared for these times when, you know, we haven't, we, we went a long time without really having to spend a ton of money on that truck. And, you know, and now we're going to drop some money on it, but we're still profitable you know, and, and way above and beyond profitable. So I just, I want it cause I know there's going to be a lot of nervous Nellies that are going to listen to that, that podcast. And they're going to be like, okay, what's the catch? Where's the scam? You know, what are you, what are you trying to brainwash me into? What are you trying to get me to do? Uh, I want to be real clear. It's not riskless. It is risky. It is, but it's so worth it. It is so worth it. That's you know, what we have to think about. Business, by its nature, is risky. Good business is the ability to minimize risk. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if risk is a problem for you, you don't want to be in business anyway. We're not yeah. trying to take people that, and that, that would not normally be in business and convince them to go into business. That's not what we're here to do. What we're here to do is if, if it was your dream or your goal or your aspiration – to be in business because of the things that that gives you freedom and choice and lots of things, you know, um, able to do things your way. We can show you how to do that and minimize the risk. But if, if you're looking for someone, if you're looking for something that's without risk, you, you, you know, you, you need to stay working for somebody else. Now that has risk. You can go in tomorrow and the job be gone. Okay. So I don't, I mean, I, I, I guess, I guess you could take Bernie's money and that would be risk free, I guess. I don't know, but I, I yeah. can't I can't tell you what you could do that doesn't have risk, you know. Um well, but, and uh, I think that's the thing that's about a... risk though is the greater the risk, the greater the reward. Right. You know. So I mean you have to you know business is managing that risk. That's really all it is, you know, and that's you know the way we do things by design, it's to it's it's a it's a it's a it's a lower investment. It, you know, it, it's it's that's lower risk. You know, uh, we have a, the ability to to haul. I I could I'd really like to look. You know, there's thirty thousand loads on a low board right now. I'd like to go in there and check and see how many of them are at two twenty five, and higher, eliminate those. Okay, and then and then look at how many of them are, you know, buck seventy five and higher. And and see how many of those loads we can haul for a profit versus the normal people who have a seven hundred dollar a week car pay, or truck payment, the ones that they can't haul. So I mean, so all all that goes into minim, that, you know, that, that again, that's minimizing the risk because we can haul freight every day. We don't have to sit and wait for the load to come around that pays four bucks a mile before we have to take it. You know, we don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, this is all, this is all relative, you know, when you say risk, but, but no, to get back to your question, there's no way that you can go into business and not take a risk. I, I don't, there's just, it doesn't exist. Even the oldest profession on earth, it has risks, you know. So, I have an answer for you. All right. There's 30,189 loads posted right now on Landstar Online. All right. And I selected van. And I selected 225, and there's 10,190 right now. Van loads. Now, if I take if I take vans out and I include everything, 12,905 are over 225. So let's okay. go to 175. Maybe my computer's going to cooperate with me. It may not. It doesn't want to. 175 for all trailers. 22,637. And vans, 
18,954. So that tells us there's about, there's over 10,000 loads at 225 or higher. And there's another 8,000 that are between $1.75 and 225. So right there's your answer. I mean, that's more than half. Right. So we have more load selection, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, my guess would be we have more load selection in geographic areas where it could be challenging um, because rates obviously are driven by that. Mm-hmm. So um, it just gives us uh, the ability to operate. Uh, and because we are uh, profitable, even at those rates, we might, we make money. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to eliminate the risk, uh, Chris. All we can do is, is mitigate it. Um, you know, uh, the, the, I guess the one thing where we could offer our guys is that, look, if you come here and drive our truck for a year or two, you can prove to yourself that it's, it it works, you Mm -hmm. know, Uh, I'm not, I'm, you know, I don't really feel like we have to sell this anyway. I mean, you know, if, if you don't think that the opportunity still exists, you probably need to stay where you are anyway, you know? Yeah. Well, Uh, I think we also need to. We need to think about risk because as human beings, there were, there were risks that exist today that did not exist 5,000 years ago. You know, 5,000 years ago, you could not get in a metal box like I did this morning and travel at 75 miles per hour with all my kids with the risk of blowing a tire and driving into a hillside and dying. Right. There was a time when you could not get in an aluminum tube and fly 30,000 feet through the air. Well, those are legitimate risks, but we're so we're so used to getting on airplanes and driving cars and driving trucks and riding roller coasters and doing all of these things that bend the laws of physics way beyond what our bodies are able to handle. Um, And we're so used to that. And what makes me kind of sad is I see complacency where this week we just saw images of trucks sitting in truck stops in four feet of water and nobody seemed to manage to see that coming. You know, I just don't see that happening to me. You know, I I guess it could, but, you know, I keep a pretty close close eye on that weather. And, you know, they're not good at telling us what's going to happen 250 years from now, but they've got the next 48 hours pretty much handled. You know, they they got a pretty firm grasp on what's going to happen over the next 24 to 48 hours. So I ought to know if if there's a 100% chance of rain between like Beaumont and Houston, I'm probably going to think about that before I drive in there, you know? Well, and and then when it started, I mean, I think I would have, you know, ELD or not, I'd have put in the wind. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I would have vacated I mean, the premises. I see a storm coming. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm going to get the hell out of Dodge, you know? So, yeah. uh, how do you fix it? Um, well, it's, it, it's, it's understanding that life has risk, you know, R- risk is, is something that's real. And we, um, we need to, um, we just need to understand that it's, that it's there. Um, I've got a, uh, you know, Chris about that, you know, I, I'm not a risk taker per se, but I've, I've always been more afraid of failing than I've been afraid to take a risk. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, it, it it never bothered me to take a risk in business if the reward was good enough because I knew that probably I could manage that risk. But I was more I was always more afraid of not trying and 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 the the risk that comes with 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 being a failure, you know. Yeah. Um so I don't know. I it, it, I guess it's why all and that's why everybody's not cut out to be in business i mean if 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 you can't sleep at night because you know your truck's sitting in the park in the truck stop but you know i I don't maybe it's not for you you know but um you know if you want the rewards you know if you want uh 
um, all the things we've talked about that that um, that you can get from trucking, and especially the way we do it and the time that we want to spend doing it. Um, you know, uh, you, you you're gonna have to you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take some risk in order to have uh, that kind of reward. That just that's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. I'm looking for an article here. It's gonna bring it up. At, on freight waves uh, that I, I saw that says, um, i got it on my phone here, small carriers expanding fleets as large carriers reduce tractor counts. And I was trying to bring this up on the, uh, on the computer here, but it's not cooperating with me, I guess. Uh, this, this popped up this morning, and uh, what I found it to be interesting uh, according to FMCSA data, carriers who operate smaller fleet sizes of one to six trucks continue to add power to their operation, with tractor counts growing 5% since last September. Over the same time, fleets who operate more than 1,000 units have decreased tractor count size by almost 3.5%. A byproduct of the sell-off has been continued increase in used truck prices for three-year-old Class 8 trucks, even as the freight market has softened from a year-over-year perspective. One thing that I found here is uh, Freight Wave's Chief Insight Officer, Dean Crokey, I guess, says, Digit- digitization and e-commerce has made it easier for smaller carriers to penetrate the market by giving them visibility via technology like mobile load board apps and increasing volumes of regional freight movements compared to longer haul over the road freight that is more difficult to manage and maintain utilization levels. Now, the guys that write for freight waves, they love to use big words, but here's what I got out of that, okay? What I got out of that is there is a shift happening in the market and that shift is that, and we're getting as we get closer and closer and closer to to blockchain technology and 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 utilization, is that there was a time when the big carriers had such a huge advantage because of their communication ability, because of their brand identity. You know, well. Uh, you know, I can I can bring an orange truck, I can bring a white truck, I can bring a red truck. Uh, those guys, I could if I was shipping something, I could name off certain carriers, and those carriers were easy to contact because they were had visibility and they had brand awareness in the market, and so people could could contact them, and then they had sure yes yes we can we can haul your freight because surely with all the tractors that we've got we've got a truck somewhere close to you just say yes. And we'll be able to, to get there. Well, now, because the market is changing in the in the tools that are available to me as an individual, whether I'm leased to Landstar or leased to somebody else or got my own authority, this new way to communicate has opened up opportunities for me that previously really didn't exist. And now these large carriers, I think they can they can just kind of shrink their fleet or not grow it uh, as they're replacing units. They'll just throw off the old stuff and maybe they'll pause and grab new stuff. But in times like this, it, it creates such an opportunity because 2015, 2016 trucks are about to be on sale big time. You know, the, the prices of these trucks are going to drop like a rock. So if you're living in California or you're having to service California or maybe you're servicing customers like automotive that demand that you have newer trucks that we probably couldn't work for, well, we're about to have this this market flooded with used 2015, 2016 trucks, and that's an opportunity. But yet we have people looking around go, oh, it's the end. Everything's going to hell in a handbasket, and I don't know what to do now. And I'm thinking, how can you not look – at all the historical data, how can you not look at the context of where we've been through now twice in the last 20 years, at really 30 if you go back to deregulation, kind of when this started from 1980 to now, we've had three really, we're in the third really nasty period where we got too many trucks and not enough loads, uh, rates are down. uh, You know, this is the time when things are on sale. You know, trucks are on sale, trailers are on sale, but yet people, 
and I guess it's because they, they watch too much news um, and they're just being told, well, no one, they're being lied to. They're being told all the bad news all the time. Uh, and of course they're with that, they're being told, you know, well, here's the guys, either Bernie or Trump's going to solve all your problems for you. Cause they don't want you thinking independently. They don't want you thinking you can do it on your own. They don't want you thinking you can solve the problem yourself because they need to be your savior to come in and hang on the cross for all your sins. Um, but that, that article to me was really encouraging because it, it's telling me what I already believe, which is when blockchain gets here and, and I have the opportunity to get in front of the customer, get me in front of the customer and I will make a deal. We as small operations have the ability and the opportunity to serve on a level that a carrier with 25,000 trucks and rookie drivers can't do. They can't meet some of the needs that I can. Now, I can't haul 5,000 loads of toilet paper for you. I, I don't have that kind of capacity. Right. I call it monkey freight. <clears throat> but what I can do is I can come in, I can specialize, I can handle your freight, I can, I can give you white glove service that you can't get anywhere else. And when I make myself more valuable like that, I'm worth it for you to write me the check that you're not going to write somebody else. Mm. And it comes down to negotiation. But if I don't know my value and I don't know my value in the general market, sure, there's stuff that Schneider and Swift can do that I can't. Well, who cares what they do then? If they're doing something that I can't do and I'm doing something they can't do, why am I comparing myself to them? Why, you know, other than, I guess, to make them a boogeyman that I can blame all my problems on, you know, because they become the scapegoat and everybody's bitch. You know, oh, it's all Swift's problem, all Schneider's fault, you know. But they're not pulling my freight, you know. I, I'm in a different class from them. Right. So why should I be so <laughs> hell-bent on uh, being tied to them? Well, you're taking what normally is a commodity, and you're turned into something that's been value added. So you're not you you're you're you you can not compare yourself to them except that you both haul freight, but like you just said, they're just hauling the freight that is the lowest bid. You're offering a service that people are are more than willing to pay for because it that it, it no longer now is just a commodity. Mm-hmm. You know, you've taken it now, you've added value to it, you've added your own personality to it. They can't do that. Mm. And if you can find a customer that, that, that needs that, wants that, and is willing to pay for it, then, you know, there's, there's the difference, you know. Um, I've been in other businesses where, com- where the business is a commodity, you know. And if you let it be just about that, then it, everything's going to be decided on price. Once you're done with the commodity, all that matters is price. Mm-hmm. But if you can take your, this business, and, and trucking is a commodity, there's no, no doubt about it, you know. But if you can take it out of that sense and add things to it, add value to it, then it no longer becomes just a commodity because now there's something in there that people will pay for, you know. Yeah. And uh, and you're an example of that. You brought your customer to us, you know. Um, you know, they've had other people do that. They were more than happy to have you back, you mm-hmm. know, comparatively, you know, you were. And they're the paying me there. a whole lot more than they're paying anybody else. That's right. You know, that's right. And so, um, I mean, you're a perfect example of that, you know, you do, do the same thing that somebody else does, but you're getting paid more for it than the other person does doing the same freight, same customer, yeah. you know? So, uh, and, and that's just, you know, but look, <clears throat> that's also just competition. You know, you talk about risk. Okay. I, I don't worry that much about risk because I know that I can outwork your ass. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't really care. What you know, if 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 we're doing the same, I don't. Know, I'm talking about you. I'm just saying, yeah. me and, and and company. You know, right. the next company. I I don't. That doesn't bother me. The competition doesn't bother me. I'll figure out how to do it cheaper. I'll figure out how to do it better. I'll work harder at it. Y'all get it before you do. Go to bed after you do. I will do whatever it takes. You know, to win that competition. You know, and and I'm not afraid of that. Now, if you're a guy that goes by some truck and you expect to get the customer because you own a truck 
you're going to be in trouble with me because I'm gonna, I'm going to beat your ass. Okay, mm-hmm. you will. You know the you won't get the trophy. I can promise you that. Okay. Yeah. So the risk doesn't bother me. You know, and the it's a challenge to me. It's like okay, what I got to do now to win today? You know, I'm, it's never been a problem. You know, um, I just I just have confidence in my ability to compete. You know. Yeah. Because you can't work me. I'll figure yeah, I'll figure out a way, you know. Might not be the smartest guy in the room, but I'll be the hardest working guy in the room. I'll be the first one there, the last one to leave. Yeah. And if you mess up, I'll I'll fig I'll be right there to figure it out, you know. So I you know, I never just never bothered me. Never concerned yeah. me, you know. Well there's I've a there's a lot of businesses. <clears throat> there's a lot of people running around society with more degrees than a thermometer. I mean they, <laughs> they got certificates and, and licenses and stuff hanging off of them. And they can't get the job done. They they can't. They don't have the work ethic. They can't perform. And if you can't, you know, my customer, I, I deliver windows, house windows. And I'm talking to my customer one day, and we're just shooting the breeze. And I said, house things. Oh, not too bad. He said, I, let me tell you what this truck driver did the other day. He gets a call from some customer somewhere, and they said, uh, hey, we found your windows laying in the parking lot. And they come in, and it's a gate. It's a gate. I, I deliver to places, you know, that are uh, construction-type outfits. And guy comes in, the windows are laying in the parking lot, but the gate's closed. And so he gets the security footage, and he sees a truck pull up at like 6 o'clock in the morning, and the driver takes two windows and throws them across the the fence and drives off now miraculously they didn't, they didn't break uh but my customer looked at me and he said that's the kind of crap i gotta deal with you know yeah yeah uh, and he knows he's he's not going to deal with that from me ever yeah and uh, so you know while we we have to negotiate our rates up and down but the 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 swings in and how my rates are going up and down is not anywhere compared because I guarantee you there's people doing this for half of what I'm doing, you know. Yeah. And of course, you get what you pay for. Bless yeah. your hearts. <laughs> um. So you said you had something else that you wanted to cover. What was that? <clears throat> well, I was been doing some analysis this week on on costs and whatnot. You know, just looking and see where we are versus our projections and you know <clears throat> you if you read the news and facebook and you know everybody's just you know i mean nobody can make any money in trucking you know this is just uh you know you're you're you know it, it's doom and gloom so i thought well let me just but maybe i need to double check you know and see yeah. how we're doing you know because uh, i felt like we were doing okay and um and you know and we are i mean you know our cost per mile is under a dollar okay um, I'm, I'm looking around here at other people whose costs per mile are in the dollar fifties and sixties and seventies. I'm like, gee, um, so I, it just made me, it, it made me think about our, our program and, and what makes it work. And, and that, that, that really is what makes it work is that, you know, our cost per mile was the same last year as it is this year, you know, and last year the rates were, you know, at the, ra- you know, at the roof. Um, this year the rates are just sort of back to normal, but it hasn't, it's not affecting the pay for my drivers. It's not affecting my pay. You know, we're still very profitable. Um, you know, last year, you know, we could, we, we could stuff pillows with cash, you know, not quite as good this year, but we're still okay. I mean, we still, right. I mean, I, I make good money doing this, you know, I pay my drivers really, really, really well. And I still do okay. So, um, we have money to take care of our trucks. Like you said, you know, we just spent a bunch of money on that truck, you know, and didn't you, I, when you called me, I, I sensed that you were concerned about what my reaction was going to be. And I just told the guy, fix it. Okay. I mean, you know, yeah. let's just fix it. Okay. What's the big deal? When can you have it done? You know? So, uh, I think he was a surprise to hear you say that as I was. Well, I mean, you know, what are we going to do? You know? So. Yeah. Um, but I mean, we you know when, 
it, it all goes back to what we're saying. We don't have bunches of money in these trucks. We're, we're going to have to spend money on them. But look, I don't have a nine hundred dollar a week truck payment on anything. You know, right? So you know, it 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 at the end of the day, you know, we still have a a uh, a manageable maintenance expense. We don't have high acquisition cost. Okay. Um, and so it, in my opinion, it's still the only way to do this. You know, yeah. uh, it works in any market. It works for any person. And like you say, if you do occasionally have a stumble, it's not going to put you out of business. You know, um, go stumble with a $175,000 truck, you know, mm. which you can do that today. You can buy a truck for, that costs that much, you know? Yeah. Blows me away. And, and you get paid the same freight rate as I do when I pull up out front with my $40,000 truck. Okay. We make yeah. the same re- revenue. It's just, I get to keep a whole lot more of mine than that guy does, you know? Yeah. Well, and so many people just don't. I was, I was pretty good. I'd probably give myself like a B minus on my, on my bookkeeping when I was operating my truck. I could, but I could tell you what my cost was. I mean, I, I knew, you know, that my call, my fuel cost was in the, you know, 40 cent range. I knew that my maintenance was about 18. I, I knew, you know, that I could, without a truck payment, I could operate for about a dollar, you know, before I paid myself, you know, so in that, in that vein, I was a little higher. Um, you know, I probably would have needed, probably would have had to have had a buck 50, a buck 60 to the truck to make what I would consider a, a pretty good, you know, 80 to $90,000 personal income. Uh, but you know, that's not bad. Buck 50 to, to, to be, to be profitable, you know, and that's, a, it's even attainable right now, yep. you know, sure. You should be in the, in the, in the buck 60 range. So, um, well, I think, um, that was about all I had. We we need to do, um, and I'd like to have some listener feedback on this, uh, about dealing with shops. Uh, we have a thousand stories that we could tell from this weekend uh, <laughs> of dealing with shops. Um, we, we have some good shops. We have some good mechanics that we have relationships with. But I can't ever... I can't ever not pay attention. I have to stay on them. I have to watch them. I have to be in constant communication with them uh, because even sometimes the best are just a little clueless and a little out in left field. And if I'm not staying on top of them, um, so I think uh, maybe if, if we could get some questions submitted uh, for us to answer about what you would like to know about dealing with shops. I and mean, we can just share experience with you. Uh, but it would be nice to have some feedback from the audience about, uh, about dealing with shops, how to build relationship with shops, um, you know, how to negotiate prices. That's something Larry's real good at that I'm not. I'm getting there, um, you know, about just going ahead and asking for that big discount. Um, so I think we should talk about, uh, you know, trucks and maintenance in general and, uh, and, and do some, some talking about dealing with shops. Um, I believe that's all I had for, for today, Larry, you got anything else you want to cover? No, uh, we might just want to point out that we are doing some work with some of our branding and, and so you might see some changes. Mm-hmm. Don't let that trip you up. We're, we're trying to clean up our image a little bit hmm. some consistency yeah. with our branding so you may you may see some changes in in, in some things but it's just us trying to <clears throat> have a little better uh presence on across all these different media that we're trying to do and and so uh, we are getting some outside help with that so you might see some different things coming up there pretty soon but uh, it's yeah. still us nothing's going to change there so um also um we're going to um, I'll go ahead and let the, let the cat out of the bag here. You know, we, we attend the Louisville truck store in, in March. I know that seems like a long way off, but it's not when you're tr- trying to event, uh, plan events, but we do intend to have some type of event at that, uh, that truck show. 
probably on uh, probably on Saturday uh, after the after the show winds up. We'll give you some more information as it comes up. But mark down on your calendar. That would be the third weekend in March in Louisville, Kentucky at the Great American or the Mid-American Truck Show. If you've never been, uh, it's a Disney World for adult truck drivers. That so. it is. I've <clears> never <throat> been until this year, and I was fascinated. <clears throat> so we'll, uh, we'll be there. We'll have a presence. And like I said, we're going to have some type of an event there for podcast listeners and, and other, you know, people in our network. So... Um, but we'll have more on that as, as it comes along, but we, we've got some things in, in mind for you and, and hopefully keep you entertained and educated. So yeah, that's all. Well, keep, uh, keep the emails coming. Chris at blue ribbon logistics.com Larry at blue ribbon logistics.com. We still have a hotline, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for some of y'all to give me some content Four one three two four eight seven eight two five four one three twenty four truck. We're I'm on call, Facebook. I'm going to call the hotline this week. You're going to call, yeah. I'm going to call the hotline. We need to get Donnie Baker, uh, somebody to, uh, uh, you know, I've got a friend that does really good impression voices. Maybe I'll just get him to start calling, leaving really <laughs> weird messages on our on our hotline. Uh, we're on Facebook at Blue Ribbon Logistics and at An American Truck Driver. Uh, check us out there and please uh, share the show. If you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review on iTunes. We really appreciate that. And until next time. Uh, We'll see you later.